Hello again. Today we are going back a little bit. Apparently I forgot to uh, post some or pull some videos off one of the cameras. So this is going back to the 8th of last month and I started the day knowing that the the last couple of large logs I'd put on the mill had knocked things a little bit out of balance. So I'm getting ready to to work on uh, rechecking that and making sure everything's actually level. And I brought the wheelbarrow over because I had intended on starting to clean up the sawdust that's piling up over there on the far side, but I ended up not. <laughs> that's being that's been left still to this day for another day. One of the nice parts about the future mill area when I eventually get there is it'll have a, an area off to that side where I can, it'll be a big concrete pad so I can just use the tractor and scoop up all the extra sawdust that'll make things much more convenient. So what I'm doing at the moment is trying to untangle some string and then I ended up actually giving up and just getting some new uh, higher visibility string so that I can check the height of each bunk. I started with uh, actually raising the far side of the mill uh, about I don't know, half an inch maybe. Uh, it wasn't horribly lower than the than the right side of the mill, but it was low enough that when I would stop cutting, if I let go of the mill, it would kind of move it move on its own, which sometimes was nice, but most of the time was kind of annoying. So while it was flat, it wasn't level, uh, and and I'm not actually trying to go for level right now. Either I'm trying. I mean, I did raise it up so that it'll be more level, um, but I didn't. I didn't put a level on it on it to check. And so I'm just using the string line and a and a little block um, where I have that marked, so I know exactly how far that string should be from each individual bunk, um, which is by far the fastest way and easiest way of doing this. Uh, I actually use a string on either side and I just clamp that in place. And Emily was kind enough to make some soup and, and a hot sandwich for me so she came over and we relaxed for a minute. And I ate some lunch. But as you can see this is a fairly fairly long log. It is uh, 17 feet long and at the butt it is um, 21 inches if I remember correctly and at the top it's 19 inches so it's almost almost straight all the way across. It was really really nice. Um, and so now I've I'll go and check the other side and most of the problem that I had was actually that the center of the mill had actually got pushed back a little bit. So leveling it went pretty quick. Um, again, this will be something that will be notably simplified when I get around to having an actual uh, concrete pad that I can rest the mill on. It's an error right there. I'm just kind of checking to see if it keeps going after I push it, which it did pretty well. So now we'll load this big boy on. I had to get after Emily a little bit. Um, she, I, I asked her to help roll it, and she started to go around to the, to the backside. Uh, I had to remind her somewhat sternly. I got a little worried, but I uh, had to remind her that you never want to be on the downhill side of a rolling log that weighs close to 2,000 pounds. <laughs> so 
That's, that's definitely a bad place to be. But that's okay. Sometimes I have to get those reminders myself, even. Sometimes you just don't think about everything. <clears throat> and I decided that since this is big enough to cut into eight foot pieces, um, I'll go ahead and make it easy on myself. And let's actually, I, I forgot that I did that. I came over with the tape measure. So let's, let's zoom in and show you that real quick here. All right, so I lied. It was 16 and a half by 16, I thought. It's actually st uh, straighter, less ta taper than I had originally remembered, but not quite as big around as I remembered, or as I thought, I should say. I think I might have to try and remember to start doing that every time I get a log on here. That's an easy way to to mark what the size is. <laughs> The nice part is that having it such a minor difference between the butt and the far end made it really easy to get basically the same number of boards. Um, and so now I'm just trying to decide, as usual, what I think the best way to to get these is. Um, I mean, for the most part, this this goes pretty straightforward. I decided I wanted a little more space between them, and to get get the. Uh, far end of that log onto one of the bunks, so I pried that down a little bit. And I'm dragging all these pieces over here because there's a pretty muddy spot. I think I've talked about that in uh, I don't know, prior videos, but... So I'm <clears throat> taking a bunch of the scrap offcuts and stacking them out there, and then I'm actually, today, we're gonna go... Uh, we're gonna go pick up... We've got a place where we can get free wood chips and sawdust, and uh, we're gonna go load the dump trailer full. In fact, we might even hmm, I was thinking we might use one of the other trucks and one of the uh, old ones, but I don't I don't want to I don't trust them enough to drive that far. So anyway, um, and then once they get turned over, it's just a matter of marking or. Uh, lowering those stops, I decided I wanted to put a, a mark on them to a little bit more easily see, because what I've been doing is is measuring each one with the tape measure to see how high it is. And I've seen a few other people where they've just put a mark on them, and I thought that was a pretty smart idea. So I just took a minute to mark measure out one inch increments on each, each stop so that uh, I can get them. And now this, I had this in the idea that if I took a little piece of one of the boards that was the size that I wanted, then I could just put that on the saw blade, on the on the bandsaw blade, lower the mill, and adjust it to where I've got that board at the same height as what's going to be the new board, and then not worry as much about the exact measurement because now it, they're all you know they're all the exact same size. And that actually worked well enough that I'm still doing that with the 
with the beast of a lock that I have on there right now. So right now I'm, I'm sorting them into basically two piles. Uh, the ones that are standing up at the back of the forks are the ones that have one flat edge, and then the ones that are laying down are the ones that have uh, two live edges, since they need to be trimmed differently. And then now that I've got a square cant, I can just take this all the way down to as, as low as I can. And the nice part about needing good solid wide boards is it makes it pretty easy to do this. Uh, they act, the log actually goes fairly quickly. Although you do have to, you know, make sure that those log stops are out of the way. That's always a rather critical aspect of it. <laughs> so now that I've got those, I can take all of the boards off here, start stacking the finished boards. And then I'll take all of the all the boards that are single side live and put them in one spot and all the ones that are double sided live in front work my way in and trim those down end up with a few scrap pieces for kindling and tinder and then a few um, one by twos that I can use for stickers then you can flip the one the boards that now have one live edge and one flat edge over and then do the same thing with all of them See there, now I'm just flipping those around, and that's about where the camera ended up, though, but there's a bunch of lumber out of, a, out of that log, so thank you for watching. God bless. Stay safe.